So, hey. With drivers, you can use the scale of your 3D character's left foot to determine the color of his top hat. Well, it's actually true. You can make anything depend on anything. Every single property in Blender that can be animated with keyframes can also be modified with a driver. That's the reason why drivers are awesome. Chapter 1, a basic driver setup. Okay, so imagine we have a character down here and he is trying to push up this slider and this slider turns on these light sources. So the higher the slider goes, the more intense the light is going to get. Um, we could do this, now I've animated the slide already, we could just animate these as well with just basic keyframes. But that would take like a lot of time if we then wanted to change something afterwards. So instead of doing that, we could add a driver. So left click one of these lamps and then find the strength value and right click on that field and locate add driver and press manually create later. This makes the field purplish. Um, that means it has a driver now. So to find the driver, you have to go to the graph editor, then change the mode from F curve to drivers. And now you'll be able to see over here, you have uh, this driver. Okay, perfect. Right now the driver is set to zero. So it's always just zero, but that's pretty boring. So let's add a variable because variables are like the key thing with drivers. If you're into programming and coding, you know what they are good for, but I'll just explain it very briefly. A variable can contain a value or pick up a value from, from somewhere else. And then you can use that variable later. So for instance, let's, let's call this variable Jack Sparrow just for, for the fun of it. So, um, we wanted to make this object right here influence the light source or the strength of this light. So for the object, we will pick this object right here. And then we want its C location, because if we look at this, um, we can see that it's the C location, the value for the C location that changes. Okay, oh, by the way, just pick transform channel right here. Uh, the other ones, we'll talk about them later. So if we're looking, if we look at the, um, at the driver down here, we can actually see what it's doing. So we have to flick your mouse over it, or else it won't update. Uh, but you can see that, that this value down here is actually just the C location for this object. That's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and copy paste this into the expression. And what this does is that it actually updates the strength of this light to be the exact same value as the C location for the slider. So if we render this now, we can actually see that the light is turning on and off, on and off and so on. But it's, it's not very intense, it's very dull. So to boost it, we can we can actually just um, do some math. So let's multiply this by ten. Now we see that the value is at at, at its max. It's about fifty five, um, and at its lowest at its lowest it is at zero. We can also use um, like other math expressions like plus and minus. So if we uh, add ten to it. At the low setting, it will be 10 because Jack Sparrow, which is at the moment zero because this object is at its zero location, times 10 equals zero plus 10 equals 10. Okay, so if it's at its maximum, it's 5.2 something something times 10 plus 10, and that's 62. We can al also use like square root uh, of something, um, and we can even raise something to the power of two or three or whatever. Chapter 2.1, shape keys. The drivers are very useful if you want to make facial expressions using shape keys. So I've already made a shape key for this, which is obviously a face. Um, and now I want this uh, bone right here to control the, um, the value of the shape key. So let's go ahead and add in a driver to this value. And now we can locate the armature and find the bone. And now I'm going to change this to transform space. And the reason is that at the moment it's already at one because this bone is flying um, like it's hovering uh, in the air. And that's one unit above the zero uh, in the world space, the, the origin point. When I change it to transform space, it's using its own um, um, pivot point like this dot right here. 
<coughs> to calculate from. So, um, we can see right here that what we're chasing when we move this bone up and down is the Y location. So I am going to pick the Y location for this variable down here. And then the very last step is to copy paste the name of the variable into the expression. Now you can see that we can change the shape key using this bone. Um, at the moment it's not working correctly because we want uh, the bone to be at the tip of, of the mesh all the time. So we'll just go ahead and multiply this by 0 0.5 or something uh, to get a value that, that fits. Chapter 2.2, Trigger Actions. Drivers can also be used to trigger a movement of an object with an if and else statement. This object is not rotating all the time, but is only rotating at a certain point in the cycle of, of the engine. This driver is pretty complex, but I'll try to walk you through it. Okay, to begin with, we have this this expression down here. Um, first of all, I multiplied by 0 0.5, which basically changes the speed. So if I were to put this at, let's say, 1, it goes a lot faster. Um, and just to, uh, to explain it, camshaft is just the uh, rotation of this object up here. Um, the minus 1.4 is actually just an offset. So if I were to put this at 2.4 instead, you can see like the, the movement is clipping through the cam. Um, so this is just basic testing. I think I had some kind of way to figure out these values, but I really don't remember how I did it. But the problem is that the trigger is moving all the time and it's not supposed to do that. It's only supposed to move when it's it's being touched by the cam. So we can use an if statement to change that. Okay, so we want it to start moving at uh, right here, around this point. So at this point, the, the rotation of this camshaft is at almost 2.8. So we will start by saying if camshaft is um, bigger than 2.8, then do this else zero then it's then it uh, is just supposed to stand still okay so we can actually see it works for just a second right here for a brief second where it's not moving and then when the the cam hif hits it it's moving but it keeps moving afterwards this is because at the moment um this value down here well it is greater than 2.8 but it still should move so we also have to lock it um, after it has moved. Um, so we're doing kind of the same thing here. Uh, just looking at the value down here, it's at 4.5, 4.6 almost, um, when, when it should stop moving again. So let's just write and camshaft is less than 4.6. Okay. So now if the camshaft is greater than 2.8 and the camshaft is less than 4.6, then it should do this. And if it's not, then it should do nothing at all. Okay, so let's play back the animation and see if it works. And it does. Chapter three, the problem with drivers. Okay, so now I'll just very briefly talk about one of the drawbacks of using the drivers. So. Right here we have this bone doing this weird animation and we want to apply that rotation to each of these two bones. Um, for this bone we'll just add a constraint which copies the rotation just to see what the driver should do. So let's use the main bone as the, as the target. So let's do the same thing but with the drivers for this bone right here. Let's go to the drivers, okay the X rotation because this was the X rotation as well. Mm. Add a driver, go to the driver, uh, find the armature, locate the main bone, and we need the X rotation of this bone as well. Okay, now it's not doing anything, but that's because we forgot to copy paste our variable, name of our variable into the expression. So now it's kind of working. Uh, the problem is it's, it's uh, rotated 90 degrees, so we can just, that's because we're using the world space. Um, you just have to, to to type in minus pi times 0 0.5 to, to rotate it 90 degrees. Pi is 180 degrees and pi times 0 0.5 is 90 degrees. So now it works kind of. Um, but if we look at this playback, you can see that 
this bone seems to be one frame behind the rest of the bones all the time. And that's actually a very big problem. Um, and as far as I know, this is a problem with the dependency graph. It's not really a bug, but it's the way it works. But you can you can make a kind of a hack to fix this. Um, so one thing you can do is to um, go into edit mode and separate this bone by pressing P to it like its own armature. And then we just need to, oops, to find the other armature and the main bone, and now it works. No latency at all. Um, but sometimes you it's it can be really messy if you have like 10 different drivers then you have to have 10 different armature as well then it doesn't really make sense anymore so another fix is to use transform space instead of the world space i have no idea why this works but it does um, because we're not using the world space anymore uh, we can delete this pi times 0 0.5 and now it all works fine so yeah Remember that, remember that, either put uh, the objects into separate armatures or use the transform space. Well, that was it for my tutorial on drivers in Blender. I tried to make it as quick and informative as possible. If some of it was a bit confusing, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Also, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can keep uploading new stuff. Well, nothing more to say then. Have a good day, people.